Hello, my name's Fraser Chadburn. My mission is to make executable MBSE simple by developing method accelerators for IBM Rational RAPSD that use industry standard SysML. In this video, I'm going to review four different ways in which a use case can be modelled in the UML or SysML. We're going to start with a textual form that's easy to exchange with the customer and end with a state machine model that is perhaps easier to exchange with the controls or software engineer. SysML extends the UML to align it better with the needs of system engineers. Something common to both languages are use cases and use case diagrams, concepts driven from methods first developed in the 1990s by Ivor Jakobsen to create object-oriented designs from real-world usage scenarios. Although the UML and SysML are method neutral, use case diagrams were part of the first UML standard and form a core part of the SysML. Not only do they give us a 30,000 foot view of what the system does and for whom, many of the methods based on UML and SysML notation start with use case modelling. The interesting thing is that neither the UML nor SysML specify how a use case should be modelled, merely they specify what it is. A description of a set of sequences of actions including variants that a system performs that yield an observable result of value to an actor. A use case diagram does not actually specify the contents of the use case. The use case diagram is like a hallway of a big house. The use case name is merely the name on the door. We have to go through the door to see the use case. In this training example, I've modelled the same use case in four different ways. The first and perhaps most ubiquitous form is text. This Word document is added to the model as a controlled file, and I've added a hyperlink so that we can right click to open it. Using structured text like this was the first convention that I learnt. It works perfectly well, of course. The great thing is it meets all the criteria, including describing a sequence of actions, including variants that the system performs. It's easy to share and exchange via email. Of course, the more alternate flows we have, the harder it is to visualise. It's also difficult to show the relationship to an evolving set of requirements. This brings us to the SysML UML activity diagram. These are the same steps, but in a graphical flowchart-like form. We don't even need all the tools on the drawing toolbar. We can limit the choice to just a subset useful. A picture paints a thousand words. We have a richer language to express logic, including things that occur in parallel, conditional logic that may cause alternate paths to be taken, or events that might cause any number of steps to be interrupted. More powerful than that is that we can elaborate requirements from the sequence and synchronize them automatically with a tool like DOORS. We can then conduct our requirement views with diagrams that dovetail the requirements with the stories of how the system is used, a great combination. We can have assurance of completeness by checking that all the steps are covered by at least one requirement. Activity diagrams are great for showing the steps of a use case. So let's move to the interaction model, the alternative behavioral model that's available in the UML toolbox. This is the same use case, but we're now showing it using a sequence diagram. Like use case diagrams, SysML inherits sequence diagrams from the UML without modification. You'll find them in any SysML or UML book. Sequence diagrams are read from top to bottom. They emphasize communication between things. This sequence shows steps that have been both converted into operations and allocated across architectural components. A level of refinement has therefore occurred into signals the system receives, atomic action the system performs, and messages or data that are sent between elements. This sequence is using UML2 constructs to show more than one scenario. As with the activity diagram, we can use the richness of the language to reference other diagrams, allowing reuse. The totality of the messages or data across multiple diagrams represent the interfaces between the architectural components, a key objective for the system architect. The fourth form I'm going to show you for a use case is a state machine model. Unlike the sequence diagram, the state machine is fully formed. It's the mother of all interactions. This means that if you build it properly, it can be executed. And here comes a key trick. If we execute the state machine model, then we can see it's able to generate any number of sequence diagrams. This state machine expresses the same things as the sequence diagram. Here we can see the signals that the system receives on the actors and how it reacts internally in response to those signals. We can now envisage a model where we started with simple text use cases that a customer gave to us, and we elaborated these into an activity model representing the steps graphically with alternate flows. We've read this back to our customer and created a set of functional requirements. 
We ran a consistency check to ensure that all the steps were covered by at least one requirement and synchronised the diagrams with the requirements into DORS for formal review. We then took each activity diagram and converted it into a set of events and operations that represent the steps. Enabled us to allocate function to form and from this we defined a set of test case scenarios showing each of the paths in the activity diagram. The cool thing is that we're free to use whatever we like. Neither the SysML nor the UML specify how a use case should look. The main thing to consider is that use cases take on a journey from analysis to design. Analysis is where we look at the problem domain. Design is where we look at the solution domain. Throughout this journey, we will meet different people with different needs and levels of knowledge. We need to consider their needs, recognising that different stakeholders will have different needs and that the needs will change over time. After all, there's little value in building an executable state machine of a system if a simple review of a use case description can determine that it's not what the customer wants after all. There we have it then. Four forms of the same use case in a nutshell. Text only, a simplified activity diagram, a set of sequence diagrams, and the use of a state machine model.